So, good morning. I was invited to give some uh, observations about Hizmet, and uh, it's almost five years ago today that uh, I was sitting in church, and at the end of, uh, after it was all over, one of the uh, people, judges, who's a friend of mine, shouts out from the back, anybody want to go to Turkey? And I thought, well, why not? I knew nothing about the movement. I knew nothing about uh, Islam. I knew nothing about uh, anything about why I'm here today. And in a sense, this is a tribute to the work of the movement. I ended up, of course, writing a book about Fatoul Glenn, the political trial he was involved in. I've been traveled around Europe and talked, done a lot of talks. I've traveled around the United States and Canada, done a lot of talks. And I met a lot of people in the movement. And the movement to me is a very amazing uh, undertaking because I, I see it as uh, having three parts from what I see on the outside looking in. One, of course, is very important is dialogue. Uh, the dialogue that occurs when we go to dinners, uh, you know, the dinners in people's houses or the dinners like we had last night, or the dialogue as part of this academic uh, enterprise that we're doing today, or the dialogue that just goes on when people sit down and talk to each other and understand each other. And the, another part that I think is phenomenally important and impressive about Hizmet is the education component. Having built 100, uh, 1,500 schools around the world in 140 plus countries. And the importance of the schools, I think, is because they reach out to people who would not have otherwise had that education. I was, uh, uh, you know, schools get a foothold in the Kurdish area of Turkey to start with, an area in which the women, young women, would not have had the opportunity to go to school. Uh, because their fathers didn't want them, uh, you know, associating that young with boys, or the importance of the schools in keeping people from being involved uh, in the uh, terrorist efforts that were going on, right? It's better, as Fatula Golan said, better to go to school than to go to, to go to the mountains. And so you begin to see that. And in Texas, where I'm from, uh, which is also in dire need of education, the, we have 28 movement schools, and we have 25,000 students in the movement schools. There are 28,000 people on the waiting list. To me, what's important about these schools is that they reach out for the community that would not otherwise be um, adequately served. And for example, in Texas, they're along the border with Mexico, or in Austin, where I'm from, they're in the poor areas. What, the last time I was in Turkey, I went to a movement school in Italia. I have a picture, but I can't show it until tomorrow, apparently. For the, but I went to one of these schools in a very poor area of Italia. And uh, so I'm talking to the kids. I don't fourth or fifth graders. I'm talking to the kids. I said, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? Oh, I want to be a teacher, or I want to be a policeman, or I want to be, you know, doctor, all of that kind of stuff that kids say. But what struck me about it if it wasn't for that school, those kids would have no dreams. If it wasn't for that school, those kids would have no dreams because they wouldn't be in school. They wouldn't be thinking about this. They wouldn't be thinking about what I can do. And we know building civil society depends on education, and that is what in civil and peace building depends upon um, civil society. So education, a very important component of the movement. The third part of the movement that I think is very impressive is the idea of service, the idea of service, uh, helping people. There's a foundation in Turkey, a foundation in each country. The foundation in Turkey, Kim Siak Mu, for example, in the last uh, major earthquake, uh, raised 30 in Turkey, raised $37 million overnight with a telethon and has, provides, uh, uh, aid, has provided aid throughout the world. Um, all, every time there's a catastrophe, you see this Hizmet Foundation show up and help people, right? The, uh, and we see it in, uh, <coughs> locally in Texas, today, today, as a matter of fact, the Hizmet folks in Austin, Texas are delivering 
a, a huge load of frozen meat to the food pantry where I volunteer on Saturday. That's that connection that was made through being in church five years ago. That's the importance of the dialogue. The, that's the importance of his met, the community service. It's based on, as you know, comes out of the Sufi movement, part of Islam, very moderate, what we would call moderate, but emphasizing souls seeing each other, souls helping each other. You know, it's a, it's a movement to me in very many respects. It's uh, what you see in early Christianity. Uh, you don't, haven't uh, formed, there's not a formation of hierarchy. It's service, helping people, meeting. And a very important part of it is a religious motivation. It doesn't, his met doesn't proselytize, doesn't try to convert, but it's people exercising their spirituality. There's a Tracy <clears throat> Chapman song, Heaven's Here on Earth. And this, to me, I was reading this, reminds me of the people that I have met all around uh, Europe and Canada and the United States involved in his met. I've seen, it's called Heaven's Here on Earth. I've seen and met angels wearing the disguise of ordinary people leading ordinary lives filled with love, compassion, forgiveness, and sacrifice. Heaven's here on earth. And I think when I heard that, that's what the, the movement is about, building civil society. You know, not far from here, you can go to the Martin Luther King Memorial, and they have these beautiful words on the, that are inscribed. And one of them, one of them is a speech he gave in 50, 1964 in Norway. I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. That is what I think the movement's about. That's what peace building is about. That's what uh, we are here to dedicate our time to during this symposium. I think for me, this journey that I have personally been on uh, with his Met has been fantastic. It's changed my life. It's changed my own spirituality. It has helped me deepen my own spirituality. And it has helped me, I think, understand better this final quote that I want to give you from Mary Ann Evans, who had to write under the name of George Eliot. We make a living from what we get. We make a life from what we give. What we have done for others, sorry, what we have done for ourselves, what we have done for ourselves dies with us. What we have done for others and for the world is immortal. Thank you very much.